I think the music paradigm, it was a very, very different uh, presentation than I think most anyone else had seen before. I, I, everyone uh, is remarking about the fact that this was just A, extremely different, but B, incredibly inspirational. I use the orchestra to show the difference between what's just sort of adequate professional playing and really inspired visionary play and people can feel that and they transfer that to themselves and say well what could it be like if we collectively could do something really great it was a great way to start a meeting because it it got the juices flowing got people thinking um, first of all he's very engaging um, he pulls the audience in he uses humor um, and passion, but when he makes his points, when he draws the analogies and brings it back home to what it is that our work is all about, he does it very simply in a very um, non-threatening manner. He makes his point, it's very clear, and then he moves to the next thing. So this board member said to me, um, it was amazing to me because every time he would stop the music and then he would make the point that he was using the music uh, to illustrate, he would say what he had to say, and I would hit my forehead and go, oh my gosh. And he said, well, it would seem, if you were to step back, that these things were quasi-obvious to those of us who are involved in the work all the time. The way in which he made the point was so very different from the way that point had been made to me 500 times before, and I understood it completely differently than I ever understood it before because of the way it was presented and the the way, just the way he did it, A, with the music, but B, it, it's, there's something about the way he's just an incredibly effective presenter. So what I do is I create this open space where people can contemplate, and the curiosity about what they're seeing and hearing almost automatically transfers into some kind of personal contemplation about my behavior, my job, my working situation, my boss. And this is another leader. And this one is determined that he's going to connect. He's not going to be focused just on his technique. He's going to be listening. He's going to be with the orchestra. Well, the orchestra never knows exactly what kind of exercises I'm going to give them. I constantly try to keep them off balance by, by throwing them questions and calling on people that wouldn't expect to be called on. And so what's it like working with this conductor? Well, in some regard, it's much easier because I don't have to work. You do all the work for us. You tell us when to start, when to stop, and uh, there was a little, um, there was a great deal of control coming from you. Well, that was just such a beautiful way the conductor described the role of the conductor in getting people n not to just follow direction, but to, to be themselves, for each one of them to be their best. So the responsibility was off me. Right, so that's a good thing, isn't it? Not really. It's, uh, it inhibits, it's very inhibiting, and it's not nearly as enjoyable. I was particularly taken with uh, when the conductor um, was over-resonating with the music. Um, because I think, you know, as leaders, we want to connect with our people. We want to resonate with what they're working on and, and what it's all about. But you can see that you can carry it too far. Uh, talk a little bit about that inhibiting, because you see, I'm, I'm the conductor's lawyer for a moment now. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, here's the conductor. He is very well prepared, right? Very well prepared. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Knew every note? Yes. Right? Really on top of things, making sure everything goes right. What's wrong with that? You know, I think sometimes we go on cruise control, if, whether we're effective leaders or whether we believe we're effective leaders, 
um, we sometimes forget to, to really consider whether we're being overly just prescriptive and giving too much detail and really suppressing the creativity of a team, in this instance an orchestra, uh, or my team in healthcare, uh, or in fact not providing precise enough guidance. What's wrong with that? <laughs> Well, it, it, it uh, defeats the purpose of me actually being trained or any of us to be trained as to what we're doing because we no longer have any responsibility for our actions because you've taken it over. So, um, it's very profound what you're saying now. Emotionally, what goes on in the musicians with this kind of conductor? I can de we can detach. We can detach from what's going on because you have taken over the responsibility of everything. It's uh, like a control issue. <laughs> yeah. I mean, leaders have to understand that they can't go around telling people what to do. They have to inspire people. They have to have vision. They have to show direction. All the things that a conductor has to do. Most of us haven't had it brought into focus that clearly before. We sort of know this, but he, he made it very... Uh, very clear and I thought very compelling. I never would have made that connection before. I never saw it before uh, and it just was just so magical to watch the way the conductor was able to pull that together. Is it, 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 are you saying it's like a power struggle? It would be a struggle if we were to fight against you, but uh, that's, we're not given the opportunity to, uh, to use our skills. Our skills have become negated by uh, by your control over every, uh, every aspect of the piece. Thank you very much. Yeah. The, the members of that orchestra bring their own personalities and um, personal demands on, on their performance to the, to the situation as well. So I found myself learning on multiple levels and I've been reflecting on it all day. It's um, it was that rich of an experience. It's serious stuff, but my attitude is whimsical, and in a way that's deliberate too, because I want to create a safe, enjoyable environment, because for the resistant people, that's the environment that's going to make them most open to looking at themselves anew. You know, you try to deliver those lessons within your own organization or even within your own industry as we try to deliver those lessons to organizations with whom we work all the time, hospitals who are members of ours or whatever, it's still threatening because you're still talking about you know potential dysfunctions in leadership or dysfunctions in the way the team is but when you're describing them through an entity that is a completely different type of entity in this case an orchestra, um, the people can hear that without being threatened, but it is very effective. And I, I think part of the reason it's so effective is because the music takes it all inside you uh, somehow. It's just, it's an incredible program. It's incredible. I just don't know how we can ever do anything other than this now. <laughs> do it again in a second.